I asked him once he was hooked up. I said, what numbers are bad numbers? And he said, well, this one here, we really don't want to see it go below 15. And I watched as it went to 15 and to 14 and to 13 and 11 to 8. And one of the nurses, a male nurse, came in and said, let's pray. And we prayed. I mean, five minutes later, the numbers just started going up. And up. Spent a couple of nights in the CCU unit. Now she's where she's getting help. She's got some hope, but she's on her way back. So we know what we're talking about when we talk about suicide. In that process of recovery, we need to let go of the guilt and the shame that we feel that we failed someone. We failed to hear the cry. I've got a lady in our church that about every other works week says I'm going to commit suicide. And it's just almost that cry wolf thing. You just, you don't believe her. But what happens when she gets to that point where she does? And so by law, you have to notify the police when someone does that. But they're talking, and is anybody listening? Kids are great in listening to kids. I don't mean to call them kids or young adults. They're listening to one another. Because parents don't hear. We, we don't, we, we've got such a, a, a language gap. It's just like the goth scene, the punk scene. We don't understand the lifestyle and the language. But they do. I can't make out a lot of the things in their songs, but they pick them right up and sing along. I said, what was that? And I mean, they know the words. But we got to let go of the guilt and shame. The pain is real. Pain is deep, but not too deep for a loving Savior to reach in and hold us, comfort us, and in His time to heal us. That's our hope. One of my favorite verses in the Bible is in Matthew 11, 28. It says, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. There's two kids in here tonight that have thought about suicide lately. One of them has even told his friends. The other one thinks about it. Is anybody listening? Does anyone understand what I'm going through? Does anybody care? And I say, yes, we do. But you gotta talk. You gotta say, I hurt. I not only want help, I need help. It's tough for a kid to say they hurt. Couldn't say that in my generation. Well, you just to button that lip up and grunt your way through it. No, not anymore. You gotta talk, you gotta share. And if that's you tonight, or if that's anybody in here tonight, before you leave, grab someone and let them pray with you. We need to go far beyond where we're at with this. This is just a stepping stone into someone's life. They're out there. You know them. You hear them. If you're on Facebook, you, you see them all the time. 
It's hard to get some of them as friends. But if a friend knows a friend that knows a friend, you'll get a lot of them. I had over 5,000 friends, kicked out 1,000 of them. Ten days later, I was up to 5,000 again, kicked out another 800, and now I'm up to 5,000 again. It happens that quick when the word gets out. Someone cares. I don't say that to boast about friends on Facebook. No, the, the message is that there's, there's someone out there listening. There's someone that cares and wants to help. That could be you. 60 people from Sydney, Australia. It's 15 hours time difference. They got connected. And hopefully they're getting help. If it only by one person, yes. make a difference. Yes. And if that's all it takes, I say use me. Yes. If it takes two, Joanne, there's two of us. Yes. We got a house full of helpers. So y'all be blessed. Amen. Got a long ways to go. Amen. But only by his grace. Hallelujah.